there's so much familiarity here that it that it does feel like a coin flip at times in terms of like the matchup. Whereas I found that the enough to get me to the window with the Tigers, I, I'm sort of just leaning to the Phillies here for two reasons. One, I'd be willing to oppose some of that Mets money and take a plus price if I if I was forced to bet this game. But two, I think there might be a little hidden value with the Phillies and how they're gonna gonna approach this game. So Rob Thompson, Phillies manager after game three. Uh, you know, said everyone is available, which is not an uncommon statement from a manager going into an elimination game. Basically, what he's telling you is it's all hands on deck. We don't win tomorrow. The season is over. But what that means, I think, for the Phillies here is that it's going to be Ranger Suarez to start and maybe uh, Christopher Sanchez after him, which I which I don't hate. That adds a little bit of, of, of value, in my opinion, to the Phillies. And the other thing I like about Suarez, who's going to start this game for the Phillies, is I think the time off that he's had from his last start to this playoff appearance is really going to help him. He he looked very fatigued at times post-All-Star break. So, of course, he was an All-Star, pitched out of his mind in the first half. First 17 starts of the year, 10-2, and 2.27 ERA. I mean, he was borderline unhittable in April, and he really just fizzled out down the stretch. I'm very confident in saying – that that was fatigue related. And so I do like the fact that he hasn't pitched since the 27th of September. Against the Mets this year, he's got a 2.330 ERA and three starts. So I like that as well. And again, you're talking about very, very minor edges in a very close matchup in a, in a coin flip type game. Those things matter, especially when the market's going to push this thing one way. And now you can get a plus price on the Phillies who, you know, I still think they're the better of these two teams even with the Mets' recent success. The other thing I like about the Phillies here, I think I'm selling Jose Quintana at his absolute peak. Last seven starts, he's got a 0.64 ERA. I don't think, I don't see how that could possibly get any better. You know, he's been awesome. But again, like at some point, we've seen Quintana for years and years. He's probably going to trend in the other direction. And I just think that this is getting priced with him at his absolute peak here. What I'll be waiting to see for in this game is what Thompson does in his lineup. I'm hoping he he shuffles the lineup a little bit because I've said this all season with the Phillies. Their their starting lineup is not all is not overly optimal to face left-handed pitching. We saw that yesterday. Manaya kind of shut them down. I'll look to see if Weston Wilson is the line is in the lineup. He's raked left-handed pitching all year. And that might get me to the window on the Phillies. But just for argument's sake here, in this game, Phillies plus money makes a lot of sense to me. So, how much of this is Philadelphia facing elimination? Of course, I said that wrong introducing the game. Uh, uh, the Mets have the 2-1 lead. Phillies facing elimination tonight. Last year, they faced one elimination game in the postseason, and they lost it. Does that hang over their heads here? Teddy, they've, I believe they've lost their last four. I, I Someone would have to fact check me on that. I think they've lost like four elimination games in the row in the playoffs, and on the flip side, I believe the Mets have lost four straight series clinchers at home. So I don't know what you can make out of that, right? Like Mets have a hard time clinching at home. Phillies have struggled in these elimination games. Neither bullpen has been great. Do you want either of these bullpens with the game on the line right now? I don't. Both have given up high leverage runs in this series. So, Teddy, this feels like the true coin flip. I suppose if you're going to give me plus 105 on the coin flip, I, I'd kind of have to take it. I don't think this will make my client card today, but – Something my gut tells me we're going to see a game five in this series. Adam Trigger, everybody. Outstanding ad. Keep winning, brother. On a 5-0 and run in Major League Baseball, what do you got to promote? Well, I already talked about the 5% play. You know where to get that. I want to shout out our video team. I've got 30 college basketball previews going up. From now until Jan until November 4th, when the season tips off, we've already started to put them on the YouTube page. Yep. I know that our guys don't really have time to do this. So huge shout out to Joe, Dan, Kyle, Chris, Lexi for, for doing that for me, because we're going to end up with like 10 hours of preview of, of college basketball preview content. And it's all on the Wager Talk YouTube channel, all in one nice place. So it's going to help you out. I promise. I've seen I went to see all 30 teams that we're going to talk about in those previews in person at least once last year. I've got great guests coming on. Um, so thank you to the, to the video team, who I know doesn't really have time to do that, and check that out from now until tip-off on November 4th.